Hello, I'm Scott Bailey, Superintendent of the Desert Sands Unified School District. I'm here with Jennifer Rocha, a 2017 graduate of Indio High School here in Desert Sands, a recent University of California San Diego graduate, and a Philia Project Ambassador. And I'm here to ask Jennifer how she overcame many obstacles and barriers in her life to get to where she is now, on the threshold of a successful career in law enforcement and in life. Jennifer. Hi, Scott. Hi. So it's been a while. It has been. Uh, I don't know if you actually uh, know the parallels in our stories, but I thought I would open up with that because, uh, again, you may not be aware, but uh, I actually am a first-generation college student coming off a farm as well. Wow. Yeah. I not in know Coachella that. Valley, but uh, back in Kansas. And I really was impressed with your recent uh, um, story uh, about how you overcame a lot of adversity to get to where you are now. And I will say, as an incoming superintendent back in 2017, April, to the Desert Sands Unified School District, I was quite impressed with your story then, and I knew you were destined for great things. So today we're gonna find out a little bit more about you, how you overcame some of those hurdles to get to where you are now. So uh, tell us a little bit about your childhood growing up on the farm. It was tough. Um, I be, uh, we lived in this these apartments that were specifically designed mm -hmm. for farm workers, and I mean the pay paying rent was super inexpensive for my parents at the time. And having at the time three girls, it was just tough. And the apartment was a two bedroom. Sometimes we didn't even have a bed, so we would sleep on the floors. The AC didn't work, so during hot summers, you would I would wake up and I would just see the walls sweating. Um, so I really saw my parents struggle and when they would wake up each morning they would take me over to my grandparents house and it would be like 3 or 4 a.m. and by then I wouldn't go back to sleep I was just there watching TV so I mean it was tough I've always been on that verge of just it's it's a hustle they were, they were always hustling and I've always been woken up early which is the reason why a lot of people are like why are you up so early and I'm like it, it just comes since I was a child so I feel like that just molded me since I was a child, just seeing their hustle and their grind. And thanks to them, I am where I am now. Was it early to bed, early to rise? I think that's what they used to say on yeah. the farm when mm -hmm. the rooster crows. Yep. Don't yep. know if you had a rooster? No, in Obviously. Mexico, yes, but not in Mexico? here. <laughs> okay. So tell me what it was like growing up in your family. Can you walk me through like a, a day in the life? Yeah, so my parents would wake up around three, four in the morning and my mom would get me dressed up for school. At times I would get the rhythm and dress myself up. And they would take me over to my grandma's house and she would take care of me. And I would walk from there to school and then the same routine would repeat day after day after day. Eventually we moved to a house. My parents were able to save enough money and they were able to get a house, um, which I always thought like, wow, like how did you guys do it? You guys came here with nothing and now you guys are homeowners. And to the fact that like now they have three females who are graduates, it's like amazing to see. So I feel like as a child it was tough, especially once we they took all of us girls to work in the fields because that was my, my dad's lesson to say like, hey, if you don't get a college degree, like this is where you're, you're gonna end up. So you better stay on top of your grades or else you're gonna end up here with us no matter what you wanna do. Like if you don't pursue a higher education, this is where you're gonna be. So I feel like my parents were great role models and they installed great values in us and they always told us to remain humble no matter where we go, so. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, you, you certainly pick up a lot of values from, from your experiences, your life experiences and your parents. Uh, that obviously you can recall today. That's pretty impressive. So you've described some of the hurdles that you had to overcome growing up on a farm in the Coachella Valley. Was there ever a time when you really thought, hey, uh, I can't do this. I'm not gonna be the first generation college grad that uh, my parents are hoping I will be. Was there ever a time when you felt like just giving up? Um, during college, around like my second or third year when I was going through a really tough time, um, a lot of times my parents didn't know what I was going through because I didn't want to burden them with my problems. So I was always just that tough person. I'm like, I'm going to overcome them no matter what, like by myself, like I'm not going to ask for help. Um, but I mean, since I started working in the field when I was a junior in high school and doing cross country at the same time, I was the one that told my dad like, hey, I want to work in the fields. 
So it was me who told him to take me. He didn't first bring it up. Like, I was like, I want to do it. He's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, like, I'm ready for it. Just take me. So during that time, we were um, planting strawberries overnight. So I would get off cross country practice like around 3 p.m. And then he would pick me up. We would go home and we would go in like around 6 p.m. And then get off like around two, three in the morning, get home, shower, and then take a small nap and then wake up for school. So, I mean, that really molded me into like building that strong character. And there was times where I'm like, what am I even doing here? Like, I have the choice to not be here. But I feel like that just brings back like, okay, this is why I'm going to college because I don't want to end up here. And a lot of the people in the fields were my motivators because they were like, hey, you don't want to end up here. Like, our kids decided to not pursue a higher education, but your parents are giving you that opportunity, so you should take it. So a lot of them influenced me into just keep on trying and not giving up. And during college, when I was going through those thoughts, that's why I would come back during winter breaks and then work in the fields to just remember like, okay, this is why I need to keep going. This is why I can't stop because I don't want to end up here. So. Right, right. That's an amazing story. Uh, and you certainly, like I say, overcame a lot of adversity. And, and certainly as you were talking just now, I was uh, reminiscing to 2017 when I first met you and I thought, wow, that, that gal is large and in charge. <laughs> uh, and you can see you exude the energy and the determination and obviously your, your parents wanted something for you and you went for it because that opportunity existed. Um, you know, you've had some strong mentors along the way, Ophelia Project mentors and, and uh, so forth. So impressive story. So let's fast forward a little bit to high school. We're in the high school right now, yeah. actually, <laughs> that you attended, where you graduated in 2017. Tell me what it was like uh, in high school for you. That's funny because as I was pulling up to the parking lot, I was like, well, I remember I would park my car here, run a class because I was almost <laughs> late. So it, it brings back so many memories. But I mean, high school was, was a great part for me. I mean, I met so many people so many like non-students like when I joined the Ophelia project all the lovely ladies that I met there it just I got out of my comfort zone with the Ophelia project and I learned so much to the point of like when it came to like interviews like I was like I remembered what Ophelia taught me because they would teach you how to dress how to act like the certain questions they would ask you so a lot of things that I learned in the Ophelia meetings that I would attend during lunch, like it really, really helped throughout the way. So when it came to like applying to a job at UC San Diego my first year, I remember the tips that like my mentor would give me and then the Ophelia mentors like all around, like I remember it. So I was like, wow, like now I'm putting it to use. And I mean, I got the job. So I'm like, okay, like I learned so much from it. And I feel like it molded me into just like a strong, confident woman and to really put in my mindset into like, you could do whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be like, even if it's like a male dominant job, you can do it, which is the reason why I decided to do law enforcement because I know there's a small percentage of females in law enforcement and especially Latinas. So I want to be able to make a change in that. You've definitely taken the road less traveled as they say, and uh, I admire. Uh, your determination, your perseverance. Uh, I see a fusion here, actually. Uh, the the uh, mission of the Desert Sands Unified School District, obviously, uh, and, and the, uh, the vision. Uh, we want to prepare students for college, career, and life. Uh, that fused with Ophelia's mission to empower young female te teenagers. Uh, I see that uh, you're uh, a result of that synergy. So tell me what drove you to the Ophelia Project. Just honestly, I didn't know about it until middle school. That's when um, one of my counselors, she introduced me to the Ophelia Project and she told me, you should join, like attend a meeting and see if you like it. And I mean, I had the grades, I was always an A student. So I decided to join and then I just felt like in a safe place during like the Ophelia meetings. And they weren't like, they were just so interesting. And I feel like that just made me get out of my like little cocoon. And then when it was finally time to graduate high school, I was like, wow, like I'm literally turning into a butterfly and just leaving and finally like pursuing that other milestone. 
So, I mean, it was it played a great role in, in me. And, I mean, I would love to be a mentor to other girls. And Ophelia, actually, I was a mentor for the Boys and Girls Club for three females, three little girls there. So I was volunteering there. And Ophelia made me do that because what I would see my mentors do, that's what I would take over there. So at first, the little girls would be, like, a little sassy with me, you know? <laughs> but then eventually, they're like, wow, like, I want to be like you. At the end, when I left, because I had to focus on other stuff, um, they were like, wow, like, I want to be like you. Like, you resemble a strong person, and you're so nice and everything. So I feel like I just, that just, Ophelia just really impacted me in so many good ways. And I feel like I gained so many traits from it and values, so. Wow, that's impressive. So the... Ophelia role models uh, uh, basically are responsible for you wanting to become a role model. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that, that's an interesting feeling, huh, to become a role model. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Tell, tell us about your most favored memories being a part of the Ophelia Project. I think one of the very top ones would be volunteering at the Veterans when it was um, Memorial Day because that's where I gained like my social skills that's when they finally like opened up because I was like shy at first and I didn't want to talk to like strangers but then like volunteering in those type of events I was really able to just listen to other people and just gain those social skills that I was missing so like volunteering at events like that really just made me like see what was hidden from me because Volunteering is amazing, and I feel like th those were one of my favorite memories. And then the art projects that we would do, because it resembles like the flags, the flags that we did, it was just like, okay, put your thoughts into this flag and why it represents you. So I feel like that really like makes you take a step back and think like, okay, who am I? What are my traits? Like, how do I want other people to portray me? Like, what have I gone through? So that really just makes you take a step back and really like put your life into perspective and put yourself into perspective as who you are as a human being and as a female especially. Wow, well said. I like the analogy with the butterfly flying. Uh, you certainly got your wings, right? Yes. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest lesson you learned while in the Ophelia Project? That being a female you don't have to you don't have to be let minimized like in this society females are made less and now we are proving that we can be equal to men and it just made me realize how strong and confident of a female I am if I really take the time to invest in myself and to really just put myself out there and anything is possible and Ophelia made me realize that once once I was like in that little cocoon at first and now I like flew away and now I'm graduated college and now it's the next milestone, which is law enforcement. So I feel like Ophelia really just is always in the back of my head because I'm always remembering the, the pieces of advice that my mentors would give me. So it plays a strong part of me. That's fantastic. Well, with your wings, sky's the limit. Exactly. How did the lessons learned from the Ophelia Project benefit you during college, the university experience? Um, I feel like Ophelia really just made me not want to give up on myself. Like there was times where I was at my lows, but I remember I had to make people proud. So I feel like a lot of like Susan and Terry were like, they played a big part of me. So I always remembered them and I'm like, okay, I can't let those beautiful ladies down. So I was always just keeping in mind the people that played a role in who I am and that played a role into getting into a good school. So with them, just like the whole college aspiration and job stuff that we learned, it really just, it played a part of me and it molded me into who I am and even when they would still invite me during college to come and speak at the luncheons, that also just, like, I was just like, whoa, you want me to go back? <laughs> so I feel like that really, really just warmed my heart because them still remembering me and being an Ophelia girl, you're never going to be forgotten. And it just sh goes to show that Ophelia girls will make an impact in this life. Would you recommend this program to other girls today? I would. I truly, truly would. And I think it should be accessible to every female. 
um, just because it really shows you a lot and teaches you a lot. And I feel like a lot of times a lot of females are going through so much already, even outside of school, that I feel like it's a safe space for them to just come and talk to their mentors about what they may be going through or just doubts that they have. So I feel like every girl should have access to the Ophelia Project and it's so important to just have a mentor who's have, have had so much life experience and you haven't. So I feel like every girl should be an Ophelia girl. Excellent, thank you. So Jennifer, if you could go back in time and give a younger self, a younger yourself, some advice, what would it be? Whoa, that's tough. Um, piece of advice to just never give up. It's gonna be hard. Life wasn't meant to be a straight path. There's gonna be ups and downs, obstacles, balls, curveballs thrown at you. And you just have to catch them and just dodge them and just overcome them. And I feel like Ophelia really made me grow into that person and to just be able to withstand anything that comes my way. So tell us about that feeling you had when you knew you had been accepted to uh, University of California, San Diego. What was that feeling like and, and what was the reaction of your family that you had made it? They were super proud. I was proud. Um, UC San Diego was never my top choice. UC Irvine was, but I didn't get accepted. But UC San Diego was the one that I saw the most benefit from because, I mean, it's shocking to hear, but my parents being farm workers, I didn't get much financial aid. So UC San Diego was the one that really gave me the best package. And even though I wasn't fortunate enough to live the whole college experience of living in the dorms, I feel like UC San Diego just opened so many doors for me and San Diego County in general. I met so many individuals that now play a role in me. So even like the um, community service program with the UCSD Police Department, mm -hmm. that's what really opened the doors to my career in law enforcement. So I'm just blessed and I feel like I was just destined to be in that school and I feel like I now made an impact. That's great. It sounds like you've had some really good mentors and uh, developed a network. Uh, people are able to open those doors, but obviously you have to be there knocking on that door for it to exactly. open. So. Do you think the lessons that you learned through uh, Ophelia have actually uh, brought you to where you are right now? I think so. I truly believe so. I feel like if I wasn't part of the Ophelia Project, I don't know how my mentality would be. I mean, of course, my parents and family played a part of it, but I feel like Ophelia played a big part of it just because I met so many people, especially like Stan Sniff, you, Susan, Terry, so many other individuals that just played a role into just opening the doors for me and giving me those pieces of advice and support that at times I needed. And I mean, I feel like Ophelia just needs to be expanded. Not, like not just in high school, even in college if possible, because I feel like in college, you need it as well just because it's so stressful and there's times where you just want to give up and i feel right. like just having an ophelia mentor will help you get through those tough times so if possible and i would love for ophelia to be everywhere and that's wonderful uh, and thank you for mentioning my name in that in that list of greatness so i was actually witness to this event tell us about the time when you turned to sheriff sniff and said, uh, you better look out, I'm coming for your job. It's funny because now looking at it, and now that I'm like soon in the brink of just joining law enforcement, it's crazy. Like, I can't even believe it. When I got the job offer, I was just like, whoa, hold up. Let me take a step back. Like, is this really happening? So I feel like I'm now making him proud because I'm actually doing what I said I was gonna do. And hopefully the next time he sees me, he'll see me in a police uniform. Wow, impressive. Okay, I have to ask, why did you choose law enforcement? Um, I had a teacher in high school. He was actually a substitute teacher for a while for us. Um, and he was a retired FBI agent. 
So he spoke to me about his experiences and I was like, whoa, that sounds pretty cool. Like, I want to do that. And I've never been like a type of person who does like a job and sits behind a desk. I've always been active and want to be out there and that adrenaline rush. So I feel like when I finally did a ride along with the Riverside Sheriffs, thanks to Sheriff Stan Sniff, um, I really got an eye-opening experience and the officer who I was with he you know because officers really make an impact in your experience so the officers that I met throughout like this whole journey have been amazing to me and the way they speak about their job and the way they treat the community has just made me like wow like this is a great way to like save people and to be able to help the community in any way possible and I mean, that's the reason why I, cho I chose law enforcement, but also the fact that there's not many Latinas in there, not many females as well. So I feel like we need more good people in law enforcement, especially after this past year that law enforcement has a very bad negative connotation. And I wanna be able to just flip that switch back up and say like, hey, there's good people in here and you want people like me who are good people and who are willing to save you. and to be able to just let the community know that they can trust us. Well, sounds like you're the right person for the job, I'll say that. So having had all these experiences and quite honestly on the threshold of greatness right now, you know, a successful career in law enforcement at your doorstep, a uh, very successful and fulfilled life at your doorstep, what advice would you give young girls today? That anything is possible to not let anyone take your dreams down. No matter how hard they may seem to be, no matter how far you may seem to be from them, it can be done. We were given this life and we choose what to do with it. And if you have dreams, if you have goals, take the steps now to get there and to not be afraid to go out there and expose yourself because there's so many opportunities out there, but it's within one person to decide, okay, this is what I want to do with my life. I need to just get out of this couch and go pursue that dream because opportunities are not given to you, especially coming from the background I'm coming from, from low-income parents, farm workers, migrants from Mexico who didn't get an education. They didn't have the resources. They didn't have the network, the connections. So I was the one that had to go and seek them. So you gotta seek those opportunities and nothing in life was meant to be easy. So, I mean, there's gonna be ups and downs, but to just never give up and at the end, it'll pay off. That's great advice. I, I sincerely appreciate that. Well said. Uh, growing up on the farm, obviously, uh, your parents must be so proud of you. Uh, as, as they say, uh, you've, you've grown some really deep roots and I'm sure you'll never forget where you came from. And uh, it's likely you'll be giving back, it sounds like. Uh, and that deserves applause. Thank uh, you. So I know from, uh, your former superintendent's very proud of you as well. So thank you for the interview today. Thank you, thank you. And if you like this content, uh, I would encourage you to check out the Ophelia Project YouTube channel. Also, you can find out more information about Ophelia Project at jfkfoundation.org. That's jfkfoundation.org. Thank you. <laughs>